So Thomas, uh, what I feel is really interesting here is that what you are explaining us uh, with your study of how individual viewers receive films and what they take from it, uh, from these films, uh, and what we do as uh, screenwriters or people helping screenwriters to deliver a proper scripts, uh, there's a place uh, uh, where uh, what we do and what you do meet, it's the place of the creation of meaning, right? And uh, so I would be very curious to see how you react to a tool that we are using with screenwriters to see how these two interact. Narration, you know, the creation of a, of a causality, uh, of a chain of causality uh, with human beings interacting and on screen, and then how that creates these vapors that are our meaning, you know, be it poetical, political, or metaphysical, whatever. And which often, as we've seen with you, escape from the hands of the, of, the, of the filmmaker and of the writer. I mean, in the best case scenario, it creates more and even more convincing material than what the filmmaker hoped, but still in his own uh, field of desire of, of, of crea creation of meaning. But um, what happens also, uh, more often than it seems, is that uh, film, the, the meaning can be contrary, you see that in, in short film festivals uh, sometimes, uh, the end of a film that generates a type of meaning which is nearly opposite to uh, what the filmmaker believes in, right? So the way we would uh, uh, try to summarize this combination of narration and creation of meaning uh, is this way. We create here, this is the beginning of the movie, This is the end. And we oppose two forces, which is one as protagonist or a group of protagonists, those who carry the story, and those who oppose the protagonists. You know, these are opposition forces. Could be um, human antagonists, uh, could be antagonism of, of any kind, could be also the, 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 the ability of the protagonist to be his own or her own uh, antagonist. So the way it works is that we as, as screenwriters, we deliver a path, a chain of causality where at each step of the chronology of the film, uh, protagonist and the forces against him uh, oppose, as if it was some kind of a boxing ring all the way, right? And what is probably the most uh, complicated, the most subtle, and also the most fascinating part of the uh, story development is how little by little these physical or psychological uh, oppositions, this struggle, how this little by little creates what you study, which is uh, the meaning, the, 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 you know, the, the, the result of uh, all these efforts. And what is, um, the way we, we uh, summarize it, the way we summarize it is through saying, we are trying to answer a question. So all these actions are, in a way, some kind of a philosophical dissertation acting in real life, trying to answer a question. The nature of that question changes and is a, a subject of permanent study while we work with, with writers. And for the writers themselves, it's constantly, what is my film you know, trying to tackle? And what is my film about? And what am I obsessed with also? You know, what, what is the deep, deep question that I feel like uh, uh, following? And these questions, because of these, uh, uh, the result of all these actions and all these oppositions, these questions generates a field of possible answers, which is what we call the thematical core of the story. 
And what is interesting is that here, it shows you how what generates meaning, so the meaning is the green part here, what generates meaning is not uh, disclosed towards the beginning of the film, because at the beginning of the film you just establish the dynamics that are present, and you push, um, the creation of meaning is pushed towards the end, which we call uh, often the thematical scenes, the th scenes which are the result of all the of all the fights, of all the struggle, of all the difficulties, of all the questioning, and then towards the end, it spreads. So what is interesting is that uh, the more we go towards the end, the more we enter the meaning territory, the territory where we as a viewer feel that we are entering a part of the story where in a way we are delivered what the whole thing was about. You know, what, what, what is it that the filmmaker is fighting for, in a way? Uh, what is he shouting? You know, we can call it the shout of the filmmaker. The spreading of the meaning is wider than what we think. So, in a way, we could say, after listening to you, we could say that the spreading is much more surprising than what we are thinking most of the time. So, maybe this is what the filmmaker, or what the screenwriter is pushing for, you know, the green side, uh, the green part, and, and the red part is all the surprises that the filmmaker is going to face uh, listening to what the viewers are saying, and which is what I would say for, for a filmmaker which, is, which has a generous vision of his, art, his own art, it means that is, you know, I, 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 it, it's fantastic, I didn't plan this red part to happen. But so my film is carrying even more. Um, so what, what, how would you react to that? Yeah, the, the, this, this uh, model is actually giving me quite new insights about the, the, the art of storytelling from the production side because I, I'm a little bit trained by, by the, the classical Hollywood cinema storytelling where, where every bits and pieces are, are knitted together and then you end up with a clear-cut end. Uh, but I also know that, that um, um, the new ways of uh, telling stories are, are developing, trying to, to get beyond the classical narrative storytelling. And this is a new model for me, that if you have the clever intention, you also, from a production side and, and your idea of, of telling a story, giving these multiple uh, ending possibilities, multiple interpretation possibilities at the end. So a good story is always a complex story, as life is complex. So it's really interesting that, that from, from a scriptwriter's point of view, you tell a complex story. And that is quite, uh, I mean, it's, it's logical because nowadays we are very skilled consumers, and if you want to reach out, you have to have interesting mixture of, of genres that, that reach out and, and gives a novelty to, to the audience. Um, in a, but what is also interesting is when, when I come in watching and studying the reception side, exactly what you said here, here the, the, it's a rich generosity in the story. You can follow this and this and this and this line of logic in the story. Um, and sometimes the audience are actually using these lines that is proposed, that is intended. Uh, and sometimes they go beyond. And I think that is uh, actually the, the magic of the difficulties of, of succeed in storytelling, because it's such a complex life imaging, life imiting story. Uh, which is so difficult to, to, to keep control, to, to control. Um, for example, I'm thinking about the, the, the Swedish film industry are just now trying to understand why the Swedish films fail. Why, why don't, the, don't they attract the audience? And I've watched a lot of drama comedies, so the films, uh, Swedish films trying to combine the comedy and, and drama. And I think they they often fail in, in the mixture of joy and, and sadness in, in the film. It's, it's, for me, in my view, they, they are, are over-offering the, the tragedy and anxiety, and there, there is less of comedy and real fun. So the, the film are 
the stories are, are awkwardly put together with too much sadness and little, too little joy. Uh, I, and I would like to interview the, the, the storytellers. Why do, did you put the story together in this way? Did you know that people would, would, would react quite negative to, to this? Because it's too, it's too dark. You don't feel well. You, you just, just feel awkward about this. So this is, this is exactly a field that the, the film industry and, and the, the scholar about the reception side should meet and discuss the, the, the rules, the new rules, of, of storytelling. So this is, uh, I, I think this model coming, starting in the beginning up, up there and then driving through uh, a complex ending. It's, it's really convincing and it's also inviting. So if, if you do this in, in the right way, it, it's really interesting. My, my feeling is, uh, I mean, and, and not, not the feeling, but what, what, it, what seems to be very clear, it's the fact that the screenwriter can be controlling completely this, you know? At what moment appears that character? At what moments that moment of conflict arises, you know? So the chain of action reaction, which is all these struggles, interior struggles or, you know, more, you know, in the outside world, uh, these struggles are controllable. You can control yeah, yeah. At, in what scene you make that appear. You can control at what moment you trigger uh, um, uh, frustration in one character, etc. Yeah, you control yeah, all that. Yeah. But it's not because you control that blue part, which is the narrative part of the story, which is what the screenwriter controls, you know. Um, the causality of that, even though this is controllable, and, and it, even though this is what we make, what we build, it's not because you control the blue part that you know how the result, which is the green and the red part even more, how this is going to be ending. You know, yeah, what is yeah. the result, the final yeah. impact. Yeah. So what is interesting is that it's like a bit, it's like cooking. You put together yeah, elements yeah, yeah. and you, you, you help yourself with having others uh, uh, in front of you read what yeah, you just delivered. Yeah, yeah. Or you tell them to see how they're impacted by it. So it's a constant, in constant interaction between you and the other. So in order to be able to forecast how these uh, two uh, elements about the thematical core, how the result of the film is going to operate, in order to know that, you have no other choice. I mean, yourself is not enough. No. Apart from being no. a complete no. genius, you know? No. Uh, and, and so you have to tell, see the results, make yeah. others read, yeah. and then see how... Because otherwise, you, you, you just make the film in, in, yeah. hoping yeah. you can get the money for, for it. And, and it's just, in a way, luck or lack of luck if you get somewhere or if, or if you don't. So you have to test the meaning. Yeah. To test, test in what state you leave the other. Even if they try to control the process, it doesn't, it's not controllable hmm. yeah. at the very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, what, what is, we are trying to uh, use images to see how it works, uh, uh, that process. And uh, it, it seems to be something which is close to, um, you know, these little cars for kids that you make the car roll like that. You create the physical dynamic for the car. <laughs> and then you let it, when, it's, when, the, when the wheels yeah, yeah, roll, yeah. you let it go. And then, and then sometimes it hits the bed over there. And sometimes it hits the, you know, the, the, the lamp. And that. So you never know where it goes. But you, as a writer, you're, you're the creator of a physical dynamic. Yes. And that physical dynamic is going to escape your hands at one point. Yes. And, and, and is it a problem? Or is it the beauty of it? I think yeah. it's the beauty of it also because it means that it's also the part, the subconscious part of your act of writing which is playing out, you know? In a way, it's the part of yourself which is hidden in your back which is playing in, in deciding where you go, in a way. Yeah. And then also adding to all the other, you know, actors and, and uh, editors and uh, all, all the job of all these people, their subconscious input in the film also plays in, 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 in the result, like you said, you know, the face of an actor, etc. So I think it's, it's, where, it's where even when we work very substantially in the narrative part, uh, the creation of the, of the meaning 
is where lies the miracle in a way. Yes, yes. Because of that creativity, I really loved what you said about this cre mad creative phenomenon uh, uh, on the part of the uh, spectator. The spectators are immensely creative in how they project themselves in the film material that you give them. And you could also add the, the, there is the, the perception of the message and the reception of the message. When, because everyone perceives the message, but when you receive it, it, it gets down deeper, which is the goal for, for both storytellers and, and scriptwriters and, and filmmakers. To, to make the audience receive, not only perceive. Um, if I have to add a layer uh, uh, to uh, that scheme, uh, what we find interesting often is to try to divide, in a way, the whole chronology of the film into some kind of a nearly a philosophical dissertation with its own result after each part, you know? Like, there, it could be, uh, Three parts, it could be four parts, but it's a, you know, in, in a way, each part of the film pushes towards its own conclusions. Yeah. And then you go for further, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like thesis, antithesis, yes, yes, synthesis, yes, yes. or it can go even more, less classically than, than that. But it's, it's in a way, a story is a tool to operate uh, a research. In, yeah. the, in, the, in, in a moral, in the field of morals, in the field of ethics, in the field of politics, or in the field of metaphysics, in a way. But through the uh, 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 humans interacting in, 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 real, in real life, you know, in a, in a staged reality. So I, I think it's, it's uh, uh, a story is a game to generate ideas, but as opposed to a philosophical dissertation, a lot of these ideas escape the writer. You know, it's, it's richer than a, a, a conceptual demonstration. It goes further. That's true. But what, one challenge for me from the reception side is that you should, you should really, as a writer, be c caring about the very ending. What you actually tell at the end is, is what keeps the attention from the audience. And at the very end, the last 30 seconds of a story cr uh, actually reper creates a repercussion reper on the whole conception of the story. And sometimes you, you see stories that are super perfect, well told, and then at the end it's uh, ambiguity, which you don't understand. Why is this guy smiling at, at this situation? Or why is he not smiling? And that smile could, could change the viewing, I have seen examples of that. That smile could change the whole perception of, of the driving force through that. So you should be really careful to exactly what you are doing at the end, even if you have multiple uh, possibilities course, at the end. Of course. What, what is, what, this leads us also to, to maybe uh, talk about the fact that sometimes a filmmaker or a screenwriter can come up with not knowing exactly the, the whole field of the, of the final thematical core, uh, final possible meanings of the film, because you never know. But you can have the feeling about a, a real core idea towards the end that you want your whole film to head towards. But then it means that's, that's fantastic as a, as a, often you can do that. You, you do a film to prove that, uh, you know, uh, uh, s s to prove a, an important point for you. But then uh, it means that you have to, how do you do that? Because uh, it's very difficult to forecast how the narration is going to lead to your, how all these conflicts are going to lead to that exactly, that, that exact um, final uh, uh, conclusion that you want. So sometimes you establish a narration where you wanted the narration to land here and it lands here exactly. as a core. Exactly. And then is it that you missed the points? Or is it that maybe that central core was sometimes too obvious, too explanatory, and the viewers uh, are pushing your meaning further than where you want? Uh, but I, so I think that it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's why it's interesting to ask people 
before going into shooting the film and going even to go into the financing phase to see how from the beginning of your uh, you know writing process to see where these could lead to you know uh, what is the central question that your story is supposed to uh, answer to in a way